It's crazy to think how far this play technology has come over the past like 30 years. When I first started gaming in around 94 on my Super Nintendo, this is the type of screen I was using. This big 13 inch CRT TV. Oh well. <laughs> nice. Okay, so I was not expecting the difference to be that big. And first off, I want to apologize if my voice sounds a bit hoarse, it's because it is. So right here is the my new AW3423 DWF, 3440x1440p, OLED, 165Hz. And here is my previous AW3418 DW, 3440x1440, 120Hz IPS screen. For the 2017, 2022, anyways, about five years apart. So that's the older brother, that's the new one. And I wanted to go ahead and compare them because I know some people might be wondering, OLED versus IPS is probably what you would be asking yourself if you're watching this video or you just wanna see the comparison between the old and the new. So obviously IPS has been kind of the go-to monitor for many years now. It's got the best color accuracy, the best viewing angles compared to something like a TN. And OLED, although it is the newer technology, it has been out for a while. I mean, the LG, like the C1, the C2s, like they've been making OLED TVs for a while, but OLED monitors, have really started to come to fruition in the past year. And if you watch anything at CES in the past year, you see that OLED displays were in the front and center of everything that companies had to offer. OLED is gonna be a hell of a lot more expensive. IPS prices have come down a long way in the past five years, and you could definitely get a really good ultra wide IPS 3440 by 1440 for sub $400 now. And OLED you're looking at obviously clearly pretty much gonna cost above $1,000 for any brand at this moment since they are fairly new. So pricing, IPS is definitely gonna be the winner on that, so it's all gonna depend on the budget that you have to spend. Another important factor is availability. OLED is fairly new, although there have been OLED TVs out for a while now, it is fairly new to the monitor game with higher refresh rates and stuff like that, so finding an IPS monitor is gonna be a lot easier with the second-hand market, third-party sellers, different brands have been uh, manufacturing IPS displays for a very long time now. It just seems like yesterday the, that Asus launched their pg 34 um, the 34 inch 100 hertz that was the big thing at the time that was a thousand dollars now you could find those on marketplace for like 400 sub 400 so that's uh, really come a long way so availability on ips is going to be a lot easier whereas oled some manufacturers are still just taking pre-orders on oled and you're limited to a few manufacturers making oled monitors or you have to go to an oled tv so availability is going to be an advantage on the ips side Thanks. ips what it stands for is in plane switching so quickly it's just the way that the pixels are oriented they're always horizontal and they rotate on their axis when it comes to, I guess, color accuracy, which is why you're always gonna get a better viewing angle when it comes to IPS monitors uh, versus TN panels, for example. And that was the biggest argument for such a long time. Behind the panel, there's different lighting zones. And depending on the scene, those lighting zones will turn off, will dim, will turn on. So they're gonna kind of change throughout what's being shown on the screen. So a darker scene is gonna turn off the lighting zone in the back so you can get the better colors and stuff, but it still needs to have some light to show the pixels. At the same time, because you have different lighting zones, you're gonna have some light from the zone next to it that bleeds onto it. So a black scene is not gonna look as black as like when your screen, TV, or monitor is completely turned off because there's some light being pushed from the other sides or the other lighting zones onto that corner, if that kind of makes sense. Kind of like a really complicated way of just saying that behind the pixels there is lights and different zones of light and depending on which zone needs to be bright those zones are going to bright, lighten up brighter than the other zones but just like a flashlight on the wall you can't perfectly have an exact point you're going to have light bleeding onto the outskirts of that zone which is one of the biggest drawbacks of an ips panel is backlight bleed now one thing i will say i did not notice how much backlight bleed i had on my monitor until i put it next to an oled display it never bothered me before, I never noticed it, but once it was next to it, you could really see the difference. And it's the same thing in terms of color accuracy and all that. So, um, also by the way, if you're wondering why this is not like perfectly aligned to that one, is these two are 1440p monitors and this one's a 1081. So when you stretch one wallpaper across all three, it doesn't line up perfectly with th these two monitors. And trust me, I wanna change that to make it all even, but anyways, that's a different story. Let's talk about OLED. So what makes OLED so unique? The easiest way to explain it is that each individual pixel on the screen has its own light. So if a scene is dark, that pixel will just turn off its light. So you're gonna get the truest of truest of blacks because the pixel is off. It's an absence of light, it's dark. Now that being said, it doesn't necessarily mean that OLED is by far the best thing out there. So let's kind of talk about the difference in performance 
and then look at what you're getting. But OLED is gonna have better color accuracy, deeper blacks, better contrast, all that's gonna be 100% better on OLED. You're gonna have a better experience on an OLED display. Not saying an IPS is bad, you're just gonna have a better experience on an OLED display. Now, one other thing that I've noticed or I've heard a lot about OLED is that kind of like the text is not as clear on an OLED display because of the pixels and the way that it works with the light on and off. The text kind of looks a bit more blurry and smearing. Here's some examples. I did not notice anything that I had to like squint or un or figure out it was so blurry the text like everything was legible to me could just because I'm lucky with good eyes I don't know but your mileage may vary depending on I guess a lot of different factors when it comes to how you perceive text so in terms of cons for an IPS panel backlight bleed color accuracy are definitely the two biggest ones for me but the advantage of backlight bleed is you could see it right away when you turn on your monitor so if you buy a monitor, turn it on, test the backlight bleed, and if it's really bothering you, then you know it's there and you could kind of use the warranty, get it replaced, whatever needs to be done, contact the manufacturer, you're good to go. Now on the other side, when you're looking at an OLED panel, here's the biggest disadvantage is there. Burn-in. Now OLED burn-in has been a thing for a while since OLEDs came out. Obviously this monitor has a different technology where it's QD OLED and Dell kind of has this built in every four hours or when you put your monitor on standby, it'll refresh the pixels so you will prevent any burn in, uh, burn in long term. But you don't know how that's gonna be on your display right away. That's gonna take time, a year or two, depending on what you do before you might notice any burn in. Now, if you play the same game for hours and hours every single day, then there's a very good chance that you might get burn in all of your HUD of the game into the monitor. At this point, it's too early for me to tell. I've been using this monitor for about a month, two months now. I got it in February, about two months now. Obviously, no burn-in for me yet. I play a variety of different games, but that is a potential disadvantage is that you could get burn-in, so you're spending so much money on a monitor. You don't want it to only last you two, three years before it becomes annoying and burn-in. You want to make sure that it lasts you a very long time. But the good thing is if you're buying this new from Dell in Canada anyway, there's a three-year warranty, and I think it covers the burn-in issue. So if you have a problem after in, within the three years, you could send it in and I'm not sure if they replace it, repair it, whatever it is, but the warranty is there for three years, which I think is a really good amount of time uh, for a warranty on a display. Now on its own, the IPS looks great. Nothing wrong with it. If you have an IPS panel, don't throw it out and go pay $1,200 for an OLED panel. I'm not saying to do that. IPS is still a great option for a great price. It's just something you notice when you have the better one next to it. OLED looks phenomenal. I will not be going back. I won't be going back from ultra wide as my main monitor and I won't be going back from OLED anytime soon as my main monitor. Obviously for your secondary and third monitor, IPS is perfectly fine. I absolutely adore this monitor. I mean, I've been, I've every time I turn it on, everything I watch, I've been rewatching so many movies, guys. Lord of the Rings is fantastic on this monitor. There are so many movies I wanna watch, so many games I wanna replay. Just because of this monitor now, I wanna, Replay Red Dead, I want to replay The Witcher, I want to replay so many games, Portal with RTX, like I want to play so many games that I've already played just because of the fact that it's OLED. If you guys enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, let me know any thoughts, comments, or questions you have on this monitor, I'll be happy to answer as much as I can. If anybody is asking, because I got this question a lot, this monitor that I have manufacturing date on the panel was December 2022, so it was manufactured about five months ago. and works really well i don't have any coil wine i don't have any micro scratches from the packaging i don't have any issues whatsoever with this monitor thankfully no dead pixels nothing like that so no reason to actually have to rma it very happy with it and hopefully it stays this way if you guys enjoyed this video like comment subscribe like i said and congratulations on the last video we had the i announced the giveaway and the winner was announced this week and i'm sending out the keyboard the mechanical keyboard this week as well so congrats to the winner and I will catch you guys next time.